Today is Monday, March the 4th, and this is the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. Today's guests are Mark Soderberg, ADMIS Senior Ag Analyst, and Alan Bush, ADMIS Senior Financial Economist. Started with the grains this morning, Mark, after being in Houston last week for the Commodity Classic, what can you share with us from your experience down there? Well, thanks, Kurt. I, I look forward to the Commodity Classic uh, every year at this time as an opportunity for me to uh, represent ADM Investor Services while also collaborating with our colleagues at ADM, uh, also while engaging with some of the country's largest farm operations. Uh, with agricultural prices near <clears throat> multi-year lows, there is some uh, concern uh, amongst the farm community over profitability uh, heading into this year's planting season. However, that being said, there are also reasons to be optimistic as well. Uh, input costs have started to come down here a little bit. Well, I also think there's a lot of the bearish news that has impacted prices here in recent months starting to become uh, pretty much fully discounted by the market. Uh, I did get the opportunity on Friday to attend uh, USDA Ag Secretary Vilsack and EPA Administrator Reagan speak in front of a, a standing room only crowd. Uh, while they did not provide an announcement on whether corn-based ethanol would be eligible for tax credits in the production of sustainable aviation fuel. Uh, they did uh, 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 reiterate the administration's commitment to biofuels usage in the airline industry. Uh, they also did not provide a precise date of when a fi final decision uh, would be available, but they did maintain it weeks and not months away. Uh, according to v the Vilsack, they continue to evaluate this GREET model, which is used to measure corn-based ethanol's greenhouse gas emissions, uh, stating that they prefer to measure twice while cutting once. And Mark, there's a lot of data out Friday afternoon. Can you share with us your thoughts on the usage numbers and the CFTC information? Yeah, both the soybean crush and corn used in the production of ethanol from the month of January came out uh, slightly below expectations. Uh, crush at just under 195 million bushels. That was down 5% from December, however, up from 2% in January of a uh, year ago. In the first five months of the 23-24 marketing year, crush is up. That's up uh, nearly 5% versus the USDA forecast of up 4%. So despite crush being lower than expected, oil stocks were actually above expectations. Uh, corn used in the production of ethanol at 434 million bushels. Uh, that was down a whole 10% from December, uh, largely due to harsh weather over the course of the month. Uh, but year-to-date usage is still up 5.5% versus USDA's uh, estimate, the current estimate up 4%. And Friday's CFTC data continued to show large speculators being aggressive sellers uh, in soybeans and soybean meal. However, in corn, started to see some uh, lightning up there. They were net buyers of uh, just over 45,000 contracts uh, cutting into their, what was a record short position. Lastly, Mark, what are your expectations for Friday's USDA WASD report? Uh, I see U.S. Uh, soybean ending stocks rising 20 million bushels to 335 million. This due to lower exports. I was hoping a strong crush figure on Friday uh, might offset some of that uh, lower demand there. However, uh, with Friday's figures and low processing margins, gives me a little bit of reason for pause, at least for now. Uh, I look for corn ending stocks to drop 25 million bushels. This due to higher uh, demand for ethanol production, uh, ending stocks falling to still just uh, just under 2.15 billion bushels. Uh, despite the, the figures from Friday year-to-date, uh, numbers are, are still well above the USDA estimate, and, and weekly production numbers continue to run pretty strong. The only, see, I, only change I see this month in South American production uh, is a 3 million metric ton cut to Brazil's uh, production, uh, getting the USDA numbers more in line with uh, other estimates coming from South America. Thank you, Mark. Mr. Bush. Turning toward the financial markets this morning, we've got the Federal Reserve Chairman Powell testifying before Congress this week. Yes. What is he likely to say? Okay, well, Fed Chair Powell will deliver his semi-annual testimony to Congress on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, both of those uh, testimonies will be at nine o'clock central time. So his comments are likely to be hawkish on balance. Uh, that And that would be in keeping with what 
he and other Fed officials have recently said. So I think that is something that is going to be an ongoing theme, uh, a, a Fed that is likely to be reluctant to be uh, accommodative sooner than they think that they need to. And Al, what kind of action do you think we'll see this week uh, ahead uh, yeah, from the financial futures in advance of Powell's testimony? Okay, so if I'm right that his testimony will be a bit hawkish on balance, that would be supportive to the dollar index, which I th think is also the main trend. Uh, also, interest rate futures markets will probably come under pressure in advance of Powell's testimony, and that also seems to be the main trend for, for the interest rate futures markets to trend lower. However, stock index futures will probably hold up relatively well since a Fed that has uh, appeared to be less likely to move to a combination this year has really not had a negative impact on stock index futures trading. So the stock index futures will probably hold up relatively well, uh, despite what I'm considering to be maybe a hawkish on balance uh, series of testimonies. And then lastly, Alan, other things that are happening this week that are you know, potentially market moving events or reports? Okay, of course. Uh, in addition to uh, Powell on Wednesday and Thursday, Tuesday we'll have the February PMI composite guessed at 51.4. January factory orders predicted to be uh, down 3%. And February Institute for Supply Management Services index at 53. Wednesday, the job openings and labor turnover survey, commonly referred to as JOLTS, that's anticipated to be 8.9 million. And on Thursday, jobless claims at 215,000. And also the, uh, the January Consumer Credit Report expected to show a 9.3 billion increase. And then on Friday, uh, February non-farm payrolls, and the guess there is up 188,000 and the unemployment rate anticipated to be 3.7%. Thank you both. Remember, the views and opinions expressed today on this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. If you'd like more information about our brokerage services, would like to speak to one of our experts about managing your risks, or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.